Hey, welcome to my corner of the internet again where I fanboy over pieces of art that I love. <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about um, this awesome piece of art that I found by Yoshitaka Amano. And for those of you in the know, you recognize him, his name straight away. So he is the uh, he is responsible for many uh, cover pieces of uh, very legendary game titles like Final Fantasy VI, which it, this is a uh, piece of art from. Uh, this this lady here uh, is uh, I, I should say you could call her like the figurehead of uh, Final Fantasy VI. And here are some of his other pieces of work. And this one, hmm, yes, Yoshitaka Amano. Uh, so right off the bat, th it's a, his style is very recognizable. Uh, and it's also really different from the kind of stuff that I usually uh, prefer. So, so, so a recap of uh, some of the stuff that I've shown before. This is uh, from William Bugahu and Frank Frazetta. And uh, I think you can see like the difference, the similarities between this and this is, they are very realistic like the anatomy the proportions are all very human like whereas for Yoshitaka Amano he's uh he's not quite realistic his 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 art is more feel you know uh and you can see like his the the facial shape here is is really really simple very simple it's just eyes and lips and this giant nose which is almost graphic the way he portrays it and his uh, anatomy is uh, proportions are not quite uh, human like and yet yet when i look at a piece like this it immediately well i think um part of the challenge of doing doing something like this uh, just doing off the cuff uh, art analysis is trying to find the right words to convey the feeling I get it's like being drawn into a different world altogether and I mean like like you see this uh, all the buildings here and this hot air balloon like just look at all the shapes that's on it like I don't even know what this is like why is it on the balloon and uh, this flagpole here I don't know how any of this works but it draws me in like I don't I think any civil engineer would freak out if they actually had to plan and build a city that looks like this this is a nightmare to construct <laughs> but it I think like I think for Yoshitaka Amano, uh, the art is meant to be felt. It's not meant to be like uh, taken into. Yeah, it's it's not meant to be uh, uh, compared, if that's the right word to use. But anyway, uh, this isn't actually the piece I want to talk about. The piece I want to talk about is uh, this one here. This one, so. First off, there is some really amazing use of space in this piece. And I don't know if you guys realize this when you look at it. It's like the white takes up at least, I'm I'm thinking like 70% of the uh, canvas is white. This is white, white, white. Well, maybe not 70%, but... This is off white. There's a little bit of blue here, but still plenty of white. And and what's really what's so clever about this is is 
is this this uh, horse-like creature in the middle. Uh, the the economy of his brush strokes are so is so good. Uh, there there is just a little bit of uh, dark uh, darkening here, just to give like the 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 uh, uh, illusion of volume. And then the white here just takes care of the um, um, uh, the bump that you get, that kind of uh, illusion you get when you when you shade a volume properly. So, so even though there is literally nothing in here, this is just plain white uh, with just this line, these lines, and a little bit of shading here. You so with the shape with the shape of the lines and the little bit of shading here and this 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 line here is very important this line here is you you get the feeling of this and so that's what makes it look like it's got volume even though um technically speaking this is just like very blank and you can see that he does the same thing with with uh with all this uh musculature here so very nice curve very nice curve and then this this line here with this line here it then suggests this once a little bit of a uh, shading goes on onto here and and the forearm here helps as well, right? And this bulge, and you cannot help but feel this. So, so it's quite the the economy of uh, the brush strokes and the paint in this particular piece is, is just brilliant, and uh. So this is and the the anatomy I would say um, works really well too. Uh, so first of all, uh, this 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 is a horse-like creature, and 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 y you might think like the uh, anatomy is very uh, you know just uh, just uh, go look at a horse, man, but. Hmm, how do I say this? So so there are some some differences like you can see like this is totally a uh, human arm here you know with with the with the tendons over there. Um oops. So some something about uh, anatomy especially for fantasy creatures like this this i would still class this as a fantasy creature even though like um the anatomy is very horse like um i'm going to need a white canvas for this so let's uh let's uh, put on some white and then let's draw so this is a muscle uh very uh, <laughs> Or give the simple drawing, and typically, um, you know, the way muscles are represented is you will see like this, right? So it's very important to know actually what a muscle does, uh, can do, and what it can't do. So it only it can only do two things: it can relax and it can contract. And when it contracts, it pulls. Um, so so this is this is a. Uh, your upper arm bone and then uh, and then you get your forearm bone a very crude representation uh, something like this and then and then your bicep muscles uh, sits here And then the tendon kind of goes down, connects to to this part of the arm, and then this goes here. And what happens is that when this muscle contracts, 
it pulls the forearm up like a lever. So the the trick to to having like realistic, uh, I wouldn't say realistic, but something that feels real is is you got to think about how the um, creature is gonna move. Like you can see, so this this very powerful. This is what would be the uh, sternocleidomastoid uh, um, muscle in 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 a human, uh, and it does pretty much the same thing for 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 a horse, which is it, it helps turn the head and support the head, and you can see this piece here. So this piece, I'm not quite sure what what this is. Uh, but I am surmising that this is also this and this are the sternocleidomastoid. And you can see the deltoids here, the biceps, the triceps, uh, the forearm muscles. Forearm muscles are really complicated. Um, and then this, uh, you can see the... Uh, the thigh muscles, the front part of the thigh muscles, and then uh, more muscles here. The what would be the glutes? I think I'm not that uh, great with my animal an anatomy, but it feels like it would work. It feels like it would work, you know. So this is this is probably the uh, chest muscles, the rib cage. So anyway, uh, I don't want to get too much into the uh, anatomy, but you can see uh, that it is very believable. But the brilliant part about this is just really how uh, Yoshitaka Amano cuts off, uses, makes makes use of space. He basically blocked off this entire section with uh, with his lines. And his lines are great. Look at this. Look at this here. It starts thick. And then it sort of it sort of uh, tapers off, becomes faint. And then here where the uh, where the knee is, he sharpens and thickens the line again so it, it he emphasizes it, makes it look sharper, uh, which you know like when when we get to a joint, usually we want our line weights to become thicker as well, just so it becomes um, more powerful. Because joints are powerful, you know, they're hard, they're sharp, and the lines need to represent that somehow. And you can see the lines are great here too. It's thick. There's, there's, there's a great deal of variation here. Uh, let's get closer in. Uh, so it's darker here, and then it sort of fades out a little bit with bits of darkening uh, here and here and here. And here it becomes, it's still dark, but it becomes thinner than here. And then it sort of fades out into the hair here. So this is this is great line work. This is great line work. You know, uh, something that I really wish I possess uh, for myself. Uh, but what was I saying? Yes. So with with his line work, he managed to cut off uh, the canvas, uh, which is still which would which I really would, even though there's like some off colors here and there, I would still class as predominantly white. And he basically just cuts it off uh, with this uh, amazing horse here. And then uh, uh, just sort of scatter things around. So he, so he doesn't have to do too much. He, he's letting the white, the blank, white canvas do a lot of his work for him which is a very minimal minimalist way of approaching something this is this is quite fantastic and you know i don't know can i i wonder what his medium is it feels a lot like watercolor but uh there's some pencil lines in it as well i think 
so this is definitely very watercolory but these lines I think they are like pencil lines so maybe it's a mix you know and then he sort of mixes um, uh, some pencil strokes here after the canvas the watercolor has dried yeah I, I really love the watercolor feel it's very uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's a very dreamy look very dreamy look and yeah I don't know what this is why is this tower upside down you know what's this what's this floaty cape is this a cape it's like semi-transparent cape like it looks like a jellyfish i don't know what, what was it for uh and then this floating thing i don't know ufo but all of that is beside the point when we look at the yoshitaka amano painting we want to be drawn into a fairy tale world all right, that's it for today. So do you agree with me, disagree with me? Leave a comment below and let's start a discussion. Until next time.